why we think the things that we do. Because in, unless you take the unconscious and you make it conscious, then you're going to do what you've always done and you're just gonna call it fate. Oh, I'm just this way. Or worse yet, you're gonna say things like, can't help it, uh, I'm a Virgo, you're angry. I guess you could try calming yourself down and you probably should calm yourself down. But once you calm yourself down, try to walk away from it and just go, I don't know why I got so angry. No, stop and figure it out. If anger shows up at your house, if depression shows up at your house, if anxiety shows up at your house, what do you, don't just shoot away. Don't just tell it to leave. Open the door. Invite it in. Offer it a seat. Give it something to drink. Find out what it wants. Because like I said, unless you do that, then you're going to do what you've always done. And we're just going to call it fate. Oh, uh, this is just how I am. I can't help it be any other way. I guess what I'm saying is that it's difficult to talk about having dark sides because we don't want to talk about what's in our dark side. But understanding your dark side is imperative to understanding yourself. That's why I asked that question with regards to like intrusive thoughts. You know, you gave a, a very elaborate example of wanting to, you know, kill a family or something. Yeah. But, intrusive thoughts are. Yeah. It's not like an actual like reflection of your character. So there's the question, is it actually a reflection of your character? Because how do you know a tree is a lemon tree? Lemon. Lemons come out of it. Um, would, you be, would you be shocked if an apple came out of a lemon tree? Yes. Have you ever seen it happen before? No. Okay, because a lemon tree only gives lemons. The only thing that comes out of a lemon is lemon trees. There's nothing that comes out of the lemon tree that's not in it already. So understanding that, your intrusive thoughts come out of you. That means they're in you. So the question is to what extent are they in you and to what extent are they actually controlling you? Or, do they or not, maybe not controlling you, but influencing you. Because you might say like, oh, I, I, would, I would never think that, but you did. But, you know, but I don't mean to. Well, there's lots of things that we don't mean to do. Like um, if you've ever been so angry before that you've just punched a wall, and then afterwards you're like, I would, I, I would never do that, that's not me. But you did do it. So that means that it is you. It wasn't a ghost that looks like you who came along and punched the wall. It was you who punched the wall. So what you're telling me is that that's what you would do if you were under those specific circumstances. And so those intrusive thoughts, it becomes a question of where are they coming from? It's, it's not apples coming out of a lemon tree. It's something that's in you that, that's coming out. And even if it's not something that you would dwell on necessarily, it is something that, that has come out of you. So it begs that question. What is that dark part of you? And by the way, what else is down there that is, is also animating you that you haven't yet recognized? And like, for example, if we're talking about the, the, the use the example here, sorry, of the dark side of the moon. Um, the moon is, is tidally locked. You guys know what that means? The moon is tidally locked? Yeah. One side always stays on that side. There's one side that always stays on that side. So the, the moon doesn't spin like the earth does. There's one side of the moon that's always facing the earth. So you know, as, the, as the earth spins, it just like follows us around like this. So there's a side of the moon that none of us have seen before. Now, there's, it's, uh, what's on that other side of the moon? I'll give you a heads up. It looks, what's that? Craters. Craters. Aliens. Look, well, so that's the funny thing. Aliens. It looks just like the side of the moon that we can see. But because we can't see it, it gives rise to all kinds of, of, um, of conspiracy theories. Um, there's, a, um, there's a podcast, and they actually have a YouTube channel. There's a podcast based off it also. It's called The Y Files. Uh, if any of you have seen it before, he's got like this little sidekick of a, of a fish that like talks crap to him, heckle fish. Anyway, it's funny. But the guy does um, a lot of conspiracy theory things, but he does really deep dives in them. And they're interesting because he presents the conspiracy theory as though it's a fact. And then usually about you know, two thirds or three quarters of the way through the episode, he always says, it's a fascinating story, isn't it? But is it true? And they're long episodes, anywhere from you know, 30 minutes. Uh, they just dropped one that was an hour. I haven't watched it yet, the last two. I watched like a 13 hour review of a kid's show once. Really? Yeah, it was fun. 
For 13 hours, though. <laughs> but in any event, he does, um, he, one of the ones that he looks at is this, um, oh, what was it, what was it? The Apollo, the Apollo 19 mission, I think it was. Um, long story. But anyway, it gives, it, it gives rise to this idea on, uh, of a conspiracy theory that on the other side of the moon, on the dark side of the moon, there are alien bases. But my point is just that when you don't know what's on the other side of the moon, what's over there? Aliens, uh, ancient civilizations, all kinds of things because what populates the unknown is our imagination. If we don't know what's there, that's why we assume that there are alien bases there. It's, you know, of course it's silly, it's a conspiracy theory, but when you don't know what else is up there, it's this question of, well, can you, can you disprove it? Can you prove it's not there? Oh, I can't prove it's not there because we can't see it. Ah, so it's possible. So now you can think of it in terms of your own mind now as well. What's on that dark side of your mind? The stuff that you don't have direct access to. Yeah. So now we start thinking about the things that are on the other side of the moon. It's stuff that we don't know what's there. So we start to imagine what's there. Um, but with regards to yourself, it isn't just a, a part of you that you don't want to show the world. Because much like, it, like the dark side of the moon, we know it's there, but we can't see it. We know it's there, but we can't see it. There's a dark part of your, a, a, a dark side of yourself he's pointing out here that we seem to think like, oh, I'm aware of those negative parts about me, those dark parts about me. But probably not. Probably not. Like going back to the idea of, uh, could you get so angry you would punch a wall? Most people would just say, no, I, could, I don't think I could ever get that angry. But then you do. That means that there is something on that dark part of you that you never knew was there. Um, intrusive thoughts, they're coming from somewhere. Intrusive thoughts seem to be thoughts you have that are in the dark that kind of show themselves out in the light and then we, we push it right back over, we, we, we resuppress it because it's, it's a part of our minds that we don't want to deal with yet. We're not ready to go and explore that, that other side of the, of the moon, the other side of our minds just yet. Now the dangerous thing is when we, when we hear that and we just think, that's not true, that's not me. No, that's not, that's not part of me. Because it's down there, it's influencing you in some way. Everything that's in your mind is influencing you in some way. Remember that, you, if you remember the first few articles that we read this year, the first, um, the first five years of your life, you're not yet developing long-term memories. If you think that you have a memory from when you were like three years old, you don't have a memory from when you were three years old. You're inventing a memory, which we now understand that people do do. You can completely imagine a, a scenario or an event that never happened, but you can believe it actually did. So if you remember, if you have some kind of a memory from when you were three years old, it's not a real memory. It's something that you've kind of invented. Yet, even though you don't have access to memories before that age, those things are down inside you and you're unconscious, you don't have access to them. And they do influence how you behave today. So like an example that I, I used before was a friend of mine who was bitten by a dog when he was two, when he was two years old. He was bitten by a chihuahua. The, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big dude, that's the painting over on the wall right there was painted by him. And he, um, he, today, he still has a fear of chihuahuas. He doesn't have a fear of pit bulls, rottweilers, any other dog. And this, again, this guy's big, uh, I've known since high school, he used to pick up cars, because he thought it was funny. You know, and yet, he's terrified pick of, cars? yeah. He'd go to the back of the car and I'd pick it up and he could, and he could move the car, you know, out. Oh, that would be awesome. He thought that was funny, because you could block other people into their parking spaces by moving their car. Yeah, just big, strong dude, man. Um, provided the car was small enough, of course, he wasn't doing it with pickup trucks, but still, pretty strong guy. Uh, I discovered alongside him that he was bitten by a chihuahua when he was two years old. He has no access to that memory, but that thing, that, that experience he had, still impacts him today. So when you find yourself behaving in ways that you wouldn't expect, or having intrusive thoughts that you wouldn't normally entertain, understand that it's coming from this unexplored part of your, of your mind. It's an unexplored part of yourself. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do. We can simply not believe it's there, but that doesn't solve anything. All that means is that it's going to continue to influence and impact you, and you won't even, and, and, and you're gonna not understand why you behave the way that you do. And I'm sure you, some of you probably this person, but I'm sure you all know people who do things and go, I don't know why I do this. I say all the time, God, why am I this way? Uh, why you are that way just might be explained over here on the dark side that we're not 
yet able to, to access or willing to, to access. Now, again, you might not have direct access to the memory because it happened to you maybe when you were, when you were very young, but you do have access to the symptoms or the signs of it having happened. And like I talked about, you, can, you can't uh, see a black hole out in space, but you can see how, sp how space around it warps, so you can see the symptoms of it being there. If you walk in here and you're like, <clears throat> I can ask you, are you sick? Oh, how'd you know? I, I, got, I don't see the little you know, germs on you, but I can see the, I can hear the symptoms of it though, the sniffle, the cough, the sneezing. And so you can, if you're, if you're finding yourself behaving in ways that you wouldn't normally think are me, or you don't understand why you behave that way, there's a good explanation, which is that the, it's over here in this unexplored part. So what do you do? You can't turn the whole moon around, of course, but what you can do is, Go to the dark side, take a flashlight with you, a metaphorical flashlight. And then we start to examine it to figure out, you know, what, ha what, uh, what, what do these symptoms represent? Uh, sorry, what do these symptoms suggest? Why might I behave this way? Why might this thing be important to me? You know, why might people see something in me that, that I don't see? Because sometimes it just kind of emanates off of you. You don't even expect to show it off. It just, it just does. It just comes out of you. So too often we also think of this as like the dark side is like, oh, it's the evil side. All it means is it's the unexplored part. You know, and, and for many, 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 many of us, there are massive swaths of your, of your psyche that you haven't yet ex explored and examined. And this is the whole purpose of, 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 of introspection, where it gets introspective therapy to try to figure out why we behave the ways that we do, why we think the things that we do. Because in, unless you take the unconscious and you make it conscious, then you're going to do what you've always done and you're just gonna call it fate. Oh, I'm just this way. Or worse yet, you're gonna say things like, can't help it, uh, I'm a Virgo. And so everyone's a moon, he says. We had the dark side which we never show to anybody. And of course, where does that shadow come from? You know, just not turning around, yeah. Just, it's, it's, not, it's, it's within us, it's part of us, by the way. It isn't, as the dark part of you is not something to be rooted out and to, to, to be gotten rid of. It's just something to explore. Like if you've, if you've got, you know, I don't know, like if you're angry, I guess you could try calming yourself down and you probably should calm yourself down. But once you calm yourself down, try to walk away from it and just go, I don't know why I got so angry. No, stop and figure it out. If anger shows up at your house, if depression shows up at your house, if anxiety shows up at your house, what do you, don't just shoot away, don't just tell it to leave. Open the door, invite it in, offer it a seat, give it something to drink, find out what it wants. Because like I said, unless you do that, then you're going to do what you've always done and we're just going to call it fate. Oh, this is just how I am. I can't help but be any other way. No, as soon as you, as soon as you start to think that you can't be any other way, then you're right, you, you couldn't be any other way, but it's just a cop out. And it's not just like a thing that, that will anger, I don't know, people around you, which of course it will, because that means that you're gonna to continue to behave badly and people around you are gonna get fed up with it. But moreover, it means that you're not going to be able to, to you won't ever be satisfied with yourself because you're never gonna be anything more than just a bundle of chemicals responding to the universe around you, kind of being pushed around. You're never gonna be self-determinant. You never get to exercise your free will, which means you never get to shape who you actually are you're only ever um, a consequence of what's happened around you. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Still, not a hard one.